then we turn down the music. Hi guys, we are back with uh, Cauldron's Call, and we are back with our descent into Avernus game. Just have to, I need another screen, guys. I need another monitor. Uh, but anyway, we are back with our descent into Avernus, into Avernus campaign. I am Sarah. I am the uh, dungeon master for this particular campaign. We have a little. Uh, puppy who wants to come and say hi well we're saying this because she thinks i'm talking to her oh. um but you can find me across <laughs> the internet as loves like pie on twitter and uh geek parenting podcast on instagram give us a follow on instagram we are growing ridiculously over there and i don't know what's happened but it's great so give us a follow over on instagram that's where i post the most uh and and that's me um we're gonna go around the circle and let everybody introduce themselves starting with Devin. hey everybody oh. uh Devin here uh playing <laughs> The Paladin of Bahamut, uh, he, him pronouns for me and Aiden. You can find me on all the socials as Devin Godzilla. Perfect. Nick. Hi, my name is uh, Nick. I play Moich Moinchka, an 85-year-old human wizard. Um, 85, writing that down. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it fluctuates between 85, 95. It, time is a construct, you know. <laughs> time is a weird soup. <laughs> um, oh yeah, you can find me online as uh, Rubble Rubble Nick. Perfect. Uh, Mip or I'm sorry, Nip, uh, Vin. God, my brain. It's right. Uh, I'm Vin. Uh, I'm playing Mip, our Herongon Ranger. Uh, he am across the board. Uh, my online ta tag is uh, Sinjin Kane. Uh, ready to play. Perfect, Aaron. Hi, I'm Erin. You can find me across the inter internet, oh my goodness, as Travel Nerding. Uh, and I am playing Piper, the Tiefling Bard. And last but not least, Kate. Hello, I'm Kate. Uh, you can find me across socials as at Clouded Compass. Uh, in this campaign, I am playing Preston Lithwin, Divine Soul Sorceress. Perfect. All right, I'm just going to readjust my notes here so that I can actually see multiple screens here at once on one screen. Uh, so, last we left off, what had you guys been up to? You had to go in the fail, and <laughs> Cressida had uh, g uh, g grown some wings. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, we jumped yes. off, yeah, we jumped off a city and Cressida got wings. Yeah. Yes, you floated over the the blood war battle that was happening beneath, beneath the city of El Terrell and managed to land about a mile from the edge of that, uh, big battle um and you are on the floor of avernus ready to go and we're going to start here i'm going to read some stuff to you yeah. the sky is an ominous crimson with swirling tumultuous clouds that occasionally release bursts of lightning in the distance you see streaks of acidic rain that can't reach the ground because of the heat the air is thick with sulfuric flames and acrid smoke the stench of burning flesh and decaying matter is everywhere Occasional wafts of noxious gases rise from the ground, adding to the haze. Jagged, rocky outcroppings dominate the landscape, interspersed with deep chasms and fissures, emitting an eerie glow from the molten lava below. The ground is cracked and barren, with blackened, scorched earth patches and bubbling tar pits. Rivers of molten lava snake through the terrain, casting an eerie orange glow and radiating intense heat. Collapsing fortresses and dark, foreboding ruins made of blackened stone and twisted metal rise from the ground, often surrounded by moats of lava or fields of thorny, thorny lifeless brambles. Towers and spires topped with jagged spikes po po poke up through the sand and burnt earth that still loom menacingly, menacingly over the landscape. The constant roar of flames, the distant wails of tormented souls, and the clanging of chains filled the air. Occasional bone-chilling howls and guttural roars from unseen creatures echo through the landscape. The ground rumbles and trembles intermittently, accompanied by the sound of cracking earth and shifting rock. The heat is oppressive, with temperatures scorching hot near lava flows. Sudden gusts of hot, dry wind can strip moisture from your skin, adding to the discomfort. A palpable sense of malevolence pervades the hellscape, making even the bravest feel a constant, gnawing dread. The air seems to pulse with an evil energy now that you've arrived in Avernus proper. How are each of your characters feeling in this moment? Stunned. Between, well, yeah, between what Aiden just did, jumping off a city quite literally into hell, and seeing Cressida sprout wings and 
having his feet on on he's 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 here. There is no gray area to it anymore. This is this shit just got real. <laughs> okay. Mortz. Um it's it's hot. It, it, it's it's uncomfortable. I, it I'm not more or less um surprised by the landscape just from stuff that I've read and seen and been um kind of acclimatized to, but it is it is a little bit to be actually like in there versus reading something. Um and it's yeah, it's kinda it's uncomfortable. I, I don't it's 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 what do we have some water somewhere? <laughs> Cressida. Right now, Cressida's a little bit in shock. Uh, she knew that there were going to be certain risks for Avernus, but the plummeting fall and then the wings and now the environment itself, she's a little bit overwhelmed. So she's on guard and constantly watching their surroundings with hypervigilance. Piper. Piper has that sort of like wide-eyed look as she's kind of taking in this landscape. Like this is the kind of things like these heroes who come from nothing backgrounds going on like these adventures that show up in epics. These are things that like she's only really had stories and songs and plays about her whole life and I think she's still kind of processing like the reality of this as she's like kind of taking slow steps she's keeping up but it's weird sorry <laughs> my garage is so loud <laughs> that's okay we can pretend it's a sound from Avernus <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering if that was uh, my sound of it <laughs> um, and finally Mip how are you feeling at this point on edge dreading the fact that I'm here now and also thinking about maybe how I'm probably going to be turning up back here again at some point. All right. As you're walking along, you see spurts of fire come up from the ground. Um, again, the air is heavy and hazy. And I need everybody to roll perception checks. Nice. <laughs> Would you roll more? It's you oh. know, what is my... I don't know. One for Aiden. 26. 22. Okay, 22. I rolled the natural wow. one. Okay. <laughs> Two ones. We're starting good. I can't wait. It's yeah. going to be so much fun. <laughs> Cressida, what did you roll? 12. And Mip? 26. Okay, so Where anybody with a DC of 12 or above, as you look around the landscape, you realize there are buildings here that you've never seen the likes of before. Odd, almost bricks and cement and metal. Um, some towers are higher than the walls that Balder, Baldur's Gate. Um, just massive piles of metal and glass. And as you begin to walk forward, we're going to share the map now. Um, as you begin to walk forward, you notice, we're going to share screen, share this one. You notice a smaller building looming in front of you. It's in quite a bit of disrepair. Let me go full screen here so you don't see all of my lovely things that I have for notes. Oh, you weren't supposed to see that. We're going to move that back <laughs> over. Uh, uh, it's in a quite a bit of disrepair. Um, the stone staircase in front has collapsed in places and the building is leaning precariously to one slide. Glass doors along the front have been shattered. In front of the building, um, who rolled the highest? Piper, right? Six. Uh, okay. Mip. Mip. Okay, oh. Mip. You Mip. see a sign, um, a scorched sign with the letters A, T, G, L, L, R, Y, of C, G, T, R. 
but the other letters are missing, burned to cinders or buried by windstorms in the sand at your feet. What were those letters again? A T G L L R Y of C y. Art Gallery? Of the name is known to Dragonkind. Um and Devin, you get the sense that you're getting the sense that Dragonkind in particular there were crimes committed by allies that resulted in this building being sent to the Nine Hells. And it's eerily silent right now, except for the occasional dry wind, the crackle of lava from the sticks, and occasional howls and cries from the creatures that roam this place. And just those letters are just triggering something in my head, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, okay. Aiden and Cressida Roll history checks with advantage. Everybody else can roll a history check um, just straight. Uh, 16. Okay. 21. Cressida, 22. you remember hearing stories of other worlds um, that adventurers had attempted to save, but some places ended up in the hells or in other realms due to some sort of odd calamity that occurred. This place is extra planar. This this was pulled here from another plane the same way El Terrell was. This place is like nothing any of you have ever seen before, though. This is definitely not from your world. Definitely not from any of the planes you are aware of. It's strong magic to pull places from other dimensions. This is quite unusual. Um, How many places like this have been, like Elturel, have been stolen? Mm. I don't know. Do... I, I think Aiden is feeling a, a pretty strong pull to go and, like, get into this place and investigate, though. Um, Do we so see he... any chains? Things that, like, because Elturel was suspended with chains to Avernus. Do we see any sign that this place, too, was, like, above the city and came crashing down? Above Avernus and came crashing down? From the way that this building has landed... I would say you could definitely tell that it has crashed due to the damage that has been done to the building and the surrounding area. It is in a kind of a crater. You can see where dust and earth has been kind of pushed up around the sides. These guys are um, treat. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Morris, Morris is like, get the forward. fuck out of here. <laughs> Swing out. Full retreat. Uh, Aiden's going to want to get a little closer. He's okay. obviously not going to get too far from the party, but... How like, close would you like to go? And which direction would you like to go? Um, I mean, I, I'm assuming that it's... Okay, I forget how to click and, like, note something. Um, Upper left corner here where this glowing thing is. I'm assuming mm -hmm. that's like the big structure that we're seeing. Yes. So that's just part of the bigger structure that you're seeing. Okay. Um, Aiden's going to look for, I guess, the most direct route. I guess that would be sort of down and under and then up. Yep. So but he's going to stop about there. Following okay. behind. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to be more than like 20 feet away from everybody. Okay. Is Morris so going to go this I, way? I, Morris is going to go up this way? Okay. Yeah. Piper and Cressida, what would you like to do? Uh, I think Piper watches the split, and she has been generally concerned about the trouble that Moritz tends to find. <laughs> She's going to follow Moritz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cressida is going to do the same thing. Okay, perfect. The other two she knows are, like, tanky. If they get hit, it's not the end of the world. Gotcha. Um, Moritz, in the wrong circumstance, could be a one-hit wonder. As you get closer you begin to hear voices and you Aiden in particular as you get closer see two 
large young red dragons having a conversation of some sort with several devils that have surrounded this building. Oh. Uh, One of them says to the other. Diving for cover. Okay. Infernia, we can destroy them if they would try to take the building from us. I know, Cinderus, but if we destroy them, she may be upset. And the horned devils and the bearded devil are kind of inching closer to these young dragons. Essentially, Aiden, you get the sense that the dragons and these devils are fighting over this building. Oh, this is a standoff. Okay. Um, but I tell which one said which? Um, we will say, we'll say this is, I should name them. This is Cinderia. Oops, see, equal. Yes, and this is, what was the name? Infernia. And they are, they are siblings. Oh, that didn't change the name on the other one. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, you can stop. Hello, take this off. Right. Okay, perfect. So we have Infernia and Cinderus. Okay. And they are siblings. All right. And they Can are can... trying to protect this building. Okay. Um, what? what I'm gonna. Can you? Can you? Okay. Morris is gonna go back up here. Mm, you no, I. To... Oh, I handed the message. My um. Ear, ear cuffs over to uh, uh, Piper. Okay. Um. Uh. Uh. I want to try and sneak closer okay. to be, you know, on on guard in case this pops off. Okay. Uh, roll a stealth check as you move forward. Okay. Pick this one. Ah, it's only an 11. <laughs> You're lucky, and you rolled a nine. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, the spine devils, the spine devils who are down in this, the spine and bearded devil who kind of would have had an uh, eye on you, do not see you at all. Okay. And then, as you're standing there, you see Infernia kind of take this ready to pounce stance as the horn devil steps around this well over by Cinderus mm -hmm. and the bearded devil moves up to Infernia. Give us the building, red ones, and we shall let you go. And Infernia is like, we are not giving up this building. Yes, Mortz. Do I hear this or see this or you can I all kind of... hear this because the dragons okay. are so large that you can hear them. You may not be able to hear the devils, but you can hear the dragons. And are they speaking in common or in draconic or something else? They are speaking in common right now. Okay. 90 feet, okay. Um, and it, it appears that tensions are about to boil over. These guys ah. are going to start fighting each other. Okay, yeah. If, when I, I think when, I, when Aiden saw that bearded devil step forward... Um, He's going to make a sprint for this closest spine devil and try and get oh. the jump on him. Okay, are you going for this one up here, the stairs, or this one over yeah. here? Yeah. Okay. On the stairs. Yeah, the, the literally, like, the closest one to Aiden. Okay. I need everybody to roll initiative. Oh. Uh, choose wisely your d20, <laughs> Okay, not bad. Aiden, roll a 14. Okay. Same. Ah, what it's... 16. 16 for Mip. 15. 15 for Piper. 17 for Cresta. Mm, good okay. rolls, guys. Look at that little clump. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, the Horned Devil is up first. Um, you guys rolled well, but they rolled better. <laughs> um, the Horned Devil is going to uh, first attack Cinderus. And he is going to use a... Oh, snap. 
He is going to attack twice with his fork. <laughs> this is really <laughs> Neither of his first fork attacks, actually one fork attack hits, so that's going to be... Man, I put a lot of bad guys on here, and now I'm kind of going like, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Oh, come on. You've also put two red dragons on us. Yes, so. I did. <laughs> Seemingly. Uh, what are those? Yeah. <laughs> so he We're does. At least taking this, uh. He does ten points of damage to Sindaris, and then he is going to attack with his tail, which also hits, and that is one d eight plus six. It's fourteen more points of damage to Sindaris. More. That is the Horn Devil's turn. Okay, so let me let me lab, let me label these guys because we got so many on here. I should have done this earlier. This is gonna be spiny. Just, let's say just letters or numbers or something. Yeah, so make so it we'll easy. Go a. <laughs> yeah, uh, spine devils get letters. Bearded devils get numbers. numbers. Mm. B. C. A B C. C. Easy. Easy. One, two, three. Love that. That's all I can sing before we get <laughs> <laughs> lapped by nope. whoever owns Michael Jackson's estate. Um, yeah. <laughs> and three. Okay. Come on now. Here we go. All right. So, uh, Spined Devil A is going to move up on this side and attack Infernia. Come on, let me look. Okay, two attacks. Gonna make one bite and one fork attack. So 20 and a 14, so the fork hits, which is 1d6. So he does five points of damage to Infernia. Okay, young red dragon A, which is Cinderus, is up. You guys rolled <laughs> lower than all of them, so she is oh. going to um, she is going to do a. Ooh, she's gonna fuck this guy up. Uh, she's going to multi attack the horn devil. Those are awful rolls. I rolled a two, a four, and a seven. Um, plus ten. None of those attacks hit. So it is now Infernia's turn. She's going to do the same. He's going to do the same. Three, a seven. Those that don't hit, but the 14 does, so she is going to 2d10. We have 2d6. Sorry, guys. This is like, I was hoping you guys had more. <laughs> so it's four, we all rolled eight, eight, right nine, in a row. 18. We're just watching the spectacle <laughs> yeah, you guys unfold. Really did. Yeah. Don't worry. She does <laughs> 23 I mean, points like <laughs> of damage to the Horned Devil. Cressida, you are now up. From Cressida's vantage point right now, can she see anything? There's just a building in you the way. You can essentially see, you see basically the the two dragons, and you can also see the horned devil. Their heads just kind of come over the top of that wall there. Would it be enough for me to get a, sh like a shot off essentially at the horned devil, or would that put the you, dragons at risk too you could essentially get a shot off if you were to move up here just a little bit um but he would have like half cover so the dc okay. would be higher or his ac would be higher yeah um and then just so that i can if i move towards mip mm -hmm. Would I be able to see the little spined devils? Um, you probably or is that you would probably would not be able to until you came down to this area, because this kind of old damaged tree is in the way as well. Yeah, if I move my full range of movement, um, whereabouts would that put me? So if you're coming down this way, yeah, 10, 15, 20, 25. What's your movement? Thirty. 30, yeah. So 30 would get you here. If you dashed, you could get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, about right here if you dashed. 
which would give are you these vision walls, on these two. Are these walls like complete or is that is that like a gap in the wall there for Cressida? Like I how Where old... at? So this would be a gap in the wall. Um however the okay. stairs are here. So there's no way unless you come up and kind of Oh, scooch okay. around this. She, could, she couldn't like climb up through that gap. Probably not. It is high enough that it would be probably I mean, she could try for sure if she wants to try okay. to make an acrobatics or an athletics check. But yeah, that would be a little bit hard to get up there. Okay. Okay. Let me see then. Okay, then what she'll do is use her... Uh, action to dash okay and then as a bonus action she'll summon her spiritual weapon and she can summon that an additional 60 feet in front of her okay perfect so, so she's gonna her. summon it um next to those two little spine okay. devils at the bottom there yeah and you're summoning this time oh what does she want to summon she is going to summon like a big sickle. Okay. And just, I think you said 60 feet? 10, 15, 20, yeah. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Perfect. You can go right there. Okay. And then the sickle is going to try to cleave the little one okay. just directly below us. Spine Devil B. Okay. Perfect. Spine Devil B. I think yeah, you have a, a ruler. T I think that's a ruler tool, isn't it? Yeah, there is a ruler tool. Yeah. Okay. That'll be a only a fourteen to hit. That hits. Okay. And then that will be eleven points of radiant damage. Okay. And then that will be it for Cressida. Damage. All right. Mip, you are up next. Okay. Uh, Mip's able to move 35 feet, so he'll um, move um, that far closer, to at least towards the uh, ones that um, Aiden's engaging. Okay. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Did you want to dash? 35. 35, that's right. Okay. Yes, um, and from this position I'm going to um, cast Hail of Thorns okay. and fling a couple of daggers at um, uh, Bearded Devil 3. Okay. Um, okay, not at, not at the one that I'm... No, because <laughs> like, uh -oh. otherwise... Yeah, because <laughs> otherwise danger. I'll catch you in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the idea now is this to... went down here. Yeah. That's a uh, 14 for the first dagger and a 20 for the second dagger. They both hit. They both hit. Um, I will roll damage for the daggers. I'll activate Favored Foe on one of them, so I'll get an extra D4. That's 5, 6... That's um, uh, 18 points of um, uh, piercing damage. Okay. Then they need to uh, both um, the bearded devil and the um, um, spine devil okay. will, um, need to make um, dexterity saving throws. Okay. Uh, DC 14. Um, I rolled so the spine devil rolled a 13 and the bearded devil rolled a 15. Okay. Uh, the I get to roll a d10. That's eight points of damage uh, for the one that failed and four okay. for the one that passed. Okay. That's a uh, magical piercing damage, I think. Okay. That's four. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And that's my turn. Okay. Piper. Okay, Pyra is going to run up the stairs past Moritz okay. and try to get kind of like around that wall. 10, 15, 20, 25, 
You can get about right there with 30 feet of movement. Um... Can I, like, back up five feet, yep. and I'm going to try to, like, stay kind of hidden there. Okay. Um, and then, let's see. Um, I think from there, sh I'm just going to try to keep myself hidden. Um, so I am going to, I'll just play... Like, it's it's kind of one of those just, like, very, like, heroic-sounding tunes um, on her little violin that she has. <laughs> the littlest violin <laughs> in the world! <laughs> um, but I will use that to toss a bardic inspiration at Aiden, because I do believe he's within 60 feet. Yep, I think uh, he is. And uh, then I will use yep. my action to turn invisible. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Solid. And Aiden, you are actually up next. Okay. Um, are these two dragons, are they sisters, brothers, brother, sister? They are a uh, male and a female, brother and sister. Okay. Um, let's see. Aiden is going to... Is this a gap in the wall? Yes, that is. Okay. Aiden's going to move up to here. Okay. Whoop, wrong one. Take the ruler off. Move Aiden up. Okay. All right. And with my first attack at C, I don't remember if that's a uh, spined or a, a bearded or that's whatever. That's a spined. That's spined. a spined. Okay. Spined on the top, uh, bearded on the bottom. <laughs> okay. Uh, first attack, just a longsword swing with summit. Okay. Is... Um, seven, what's seven plus nine? It's a 16. That hits. Okay. And that is a D8 plus a D6. And okay, so that's nine points of slashing, six points of radiant. Um, with my second attack. That Actually, devil, what I that need... spine devil, is gone. You, you've killed it with its first, oh, strike. Nice. Your first strike. Okay, solid, awesome. Um, then Aiden's going out that gap and engaging with um, three here. Okay, I want you to roll so an acrobatics gonna... or an athletics check to move down because that is a, okay. a tiny bit high. Just okay. to make sure you land on your feet. Uh, we'll say the DC uh, we'll... is like a ten. To get down without Let's falling. Do athletics. I rolled a natural 18 plus okay. 7. So you're good. So you're able to get down without falling prone or hurting yourself. I, yeah, I just parkour my ass out this window. Mm -hmm. um, Superhero landing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, second attack here on 3 Okay. is a natural 19 plus 9. That so hits. a lot. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I shouldn't have put these dice away because I'm going to need them again for my second attack. Uh, that is three plus eight. Uh, that's 11 slashing and another six radiant on the bearded devil. So that's 17 total. Okay. <clears throat> yep. All right. Perfect. And is he still standing? He's still standing. Okay. Bonus action. Um, shield bash. That okay. is, uh, I think that's contested athletics. Okay. Or it's, it's my athletics against their okay, athletics or acrobatics. Okay. That's 16 plus 7 there, so that's 23. I rolled an 18 plus 3, so that's 21, so I think you beat me. Okay, so I would uh, knock him prone. Okay, he's prone. And then I'm going to shout over my shoulder. Rinar, Nike Jahor, Billy Bagon, Rial Hapato, which is draconic for children. I will fight at your side. And Infernia kind of looks towards you because she's the closest. She goes, she re responds in Draconic in kind, saying, Thank you, young paladin. She also recognizes you for some reason. She knows who you are. Meh. Moritz, you are up next. Uh, I'm going to attempt to pole vault over this thing okay and go, go ahead and way. go ahead and make a like dex or um 
acrobatics check, whichever you'd like. Acro, nope. Dexterity, nope. Okay, well, acrobatics. Let's let's roll for this because I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> That's a Maybe fourteen. Do. You're able to just kind of you you want to parkour over it like Aiden as you saw him go over the wall, but you kind of just do the old man like, oh shit, I gotta get over the. Hold on, I gotta. <laughs> you know, you do the one leg after the other thing, but you're able to get over it. Okay. I'm just more, so more inspired scar. by the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> you hear like the disembodied voice. You can do it, Moritz. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm going to cast second level for a range of 120 feet okay. to this guy if I can reach him. Yeah, you should have no problem. Yep, you good. Sick. I'm going to cast uh, where it's called. Vortex warp. Ooh, shit. And I'm going to warp him like up here in the lava. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, is that a save, roll? Con save. Con save 16. Okay. I rolled a 15. Total. Okay. So he's going to go. <sighs> what does this look like when he kind of warps? So I'd say because he just like. All of a sudden, a big black and purple um, portal just up, opens up from underneath him to the size to envelop him. He just falls down, and then you just see for a second he's gone. And then um, whoever can see, uh, all of a sudden, this big portal uh, reappears like, in the sky, and then he just falls right down into the lava. Okay. He is also going to take, when he lands there, some lava damage. So I'm going to roll some D12s here. Wizards, man. <laughs> I just picture it like portal. Blue, blue yeah. circle, orange so circle. So he's going to take right. eight <laughs> points of uh, thinking, yeah. damage from being in the lava right now. Jumpers. Yeah, fair. Moritz, <laughs> is there... The lava. <laughs> Moritz, is there anything else you'd it. like to do? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to look over to Piper, and I'm just going to put my hand up like that, like, Chris, high five. Okay. Piper's still invisible, but... <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I don't know where she is. Okay. <laughs> Spine Devil D is going to move away from the spiritual weapon. He's got thirty feet. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Cressida, he can you can get um attack of opportunity with the spiritual weapon. All right. Thirty, and he's gonna come up to where Aiden is here. That's twenty six. Oh, that definitely hits. Oh. <laughs> Spiritual weapon's not terribly impressed. Okay. <laughs> apparently. Um, that is seven points of radiant damage. Okay. All right. So now he is up there by Aiden. He does take the damage. He's still up. He is going to do a multi attack. He's going to do uh, two, one attack with his fork. So we'll start with that one. That is a 17 to hit with the fork. And catches it on his shield. Okay, and then we're gonna do two spell tail spine attacks. Um, that is a twenty-one and a twenty-two to hit for those tail spines. Both of those miss. Both of those miss. So he, you know, tries to hit you with his fork and then hits you twice with his tail spine, and it just glances off of your armor. Okay, bearded right. devil B is. B is up, so it's this guy. He's going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Aiden is now completely surrounded. And he is also going to attack Aiden because he is the closest. Bring this him on. Bearded devil. Bring him on. He is going to attack you with his glaive uh -huh. first. It's a 9 to hit. And then Aiden just lifts his arm and it just goes right under okay. his armpit. And he's <laughs> going to hit you with... That was a natural 20, so 25 to hit. Oh, hit. Okay, 1d8 plus 2. Three points of damage. Um, and then I need to make I need you to make a DC 12 con save, please. DC 12. Okay. Just, just roll like... Just roll a nat 1. Okay, you are poisoned for one minute, which means um, while poisoned he in this way... He has defense against poison. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, no. like oh. Beast. I can't be poisoned. Yes. Oh, right. shit, that's right. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Ooh, so did I. Oh, uh, God, 
God, why did I give that to you guys? Bless Damn it. Because <laughs> you rock. That's why. So <laughs> you are not poisoned. You just took the three points of damage from its beard. You're good to go. Uh, let's see. Nasty, gross, Nasty. disgusting, uh, right? Fetid, rancid beard. Okay. <laughs> Bearded Devil C is I named up, the Gross Beard. And he is going to attack Aiden as well. So once with the beard. Your beard's off. Awesome. And nine. <laughs> and then the Glaive. Is that 23 to hit? Meets it, beats it. Ooh, okay, so we're going to do 1d10. Where's my 1d10? Where's my 10? There it is. Okay, 1d10. Aiden is, is so confused as to why someone would try and hit him with a beard that he just doesn't even see the glaive So coming. that is <laughs> seven points of slashing damage, and then I need you to make another con save. Okay. Uh, that's a 17. Okay, so you are not uh, wounded. You will not take okay. damage every round. That was uh, seven points of damage I took before? Uh, Yes, seven points. Four and that was what kind? Piercing? Slashing. Slashing. Okay, so I take half that because I'm resistant. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Uh, so that's three or four? Um, We'll say three. We'll be nice. Okay. Sweet. Um, It is now the Horn Devil's turn, and he's actually going to take his movement to get out of this lava. So it's five, ten, Herp. fifteen, Herp. twenty, Herp. twenty-five, Herp. thirty. And come here behind these devils. Does Cinderus get an attack of opportunity? Mm, yeah, I would say Cinderus does. So we'll... I rolled a natural seven. So seven plus Stop. 10, 17. 17 is not going to hit the horned devil. So, okay. um, <laughs> but the horn, come on. The horned devil is going to. What's the range on that? 100 feet. He is going to hurl flame up here at Moritz and Piper. Ooh. That is a 22 to hit. I'm going to use a reaction. Okay. I'm going to cast shield. Okay. So that'll add two, I believe, to your AC? Five. Uh, five. Plus five. Okay. So... Did I say 22? So what's your AC now? Ha, it's 14. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me roll this damage. If I can get my other D6 out. Okay. Perfect. Solid. Ten. You, you guys take 15 points of fire damage. And then if you have a flammable object. Oh, no. That's something else. So, no. It's just you take 15 points of fire damage. Okay. Um, Don't forget you've got that extra 20 from Heroes Feast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm also resistant to fire damage. And then he is not close enough to take any of his melee attacks, so that is the end of his turn. But it is Spine Devil A's turn, and he's gonna kind of scooch up here with his other devil friends. Aiden is in big trouble. Um, he is going to, maybe, <sighs> if I can hit Aiden with his massively awful AC. We're gonna do a bite attack. That is a no. five to hit with the bite. <laughs> and that's a no. <laughs> just got tell nine now. to hit with its fork. No. This dice is <laughs> going over here. <laughs> and is not being used for anymore tonight. <laughs> Bearded Devil A is now up. He is going to come around this way. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. 30. Again. Yeah, yeah. He, um, both Infernia and the Spiritual Weapon would get attacks of opportunity on this one. I rolled a 15, so that is going to hit. And I got 16 for okay. Spiritual Weapon. Okay, so those both hit on the both of those opportunity attacks. You took 7 points of damage from Infernia. And 14 from the Spiritual Weapon. Okay. So he is going to stay there. He is going to... Oh, come on. Let me pull that up. Thank you. He is unfortunately not in range to attack Mip at this point, so he's just going to hold there. Um, all right. Cinderus is now up. And he is going to attack the Horned Devil. Um, 
um, he's going to do one bite and two claw attacks on the devil. Wow. 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 So the bite is a 27 to hit. That definitely hits. Let me grab my... He does 13 points of damage with that. And then he is going to... Let's see, he did... Math is hard, guys. <laughs> 20 on his... Yes. 20 and a 16. So one of the claw attacks hits. 2d6 plus 6. 10, 16 more points of damage to the Horn Devil from Cinderus, 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 um, and then Infernia is also going to do the. Oh, I forgot to move him up. Sorry, guys. One second. And she's okay. also going to come here, and she's going to do the same. That's a thirteen. Protect the youngling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thirteen does not hit. Natural twenty on the first claw. So. Okay. Going to be eight plus six, twelve points of damage, and then a claw attack. That's another natural twenty and a natural nineteen. So, um, Damn. yeah, one second, we're gonna do this. I think we chose the right side, guys. Twenty-four. I just did twenty-four <laughs> points of damage with. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. If in doubt. All right. Side for the dragons. <laughs> Cressida, you are up next. Okay, um, Cressida is going to, staying south of Mip, move about five feet kind of in front of him, so she has like an angular view this? of everything, yeah. Okay. And then, um, you guys will see, as if this place is lit... You watch the light dim for just a second. Okay. I just want to specify the lit. <laughs> <laughs> Moritz can do whatever he'd like, but um, you watch almost as if, yeah, you've dimmed the lights down a little bit and the light convalesces towards Cressida and each of her hands start to glow. And then she fires one two eldritch blast mm -hmm. at the bottom two of those fine devils okay so these two here you got it okay and that is a 19 and a 21 respectively those both hit um one takes seven points of damage okay and the other takes eight I have a, um, oh, never mind. That won't work. Okay. This devil is now gone. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? She's going to push up the spiritual weapon to that devil that's right at the bottom there. Okay. Yeah, that guy. And then swing at him. Okay. That's a 25 to hit. That hits. And then that is eight points of radiant damage. Okay, perfect. And then that's it for Cressida. Perfect. Mip, you are up next. This guy is. Is this space between um, Bearded Devil 3 and. Is that four at the bottom there? Um, we have three and. One. Yeah, three and one. Between oh, three and one. Yeah. Um, there is. Yeah, I would say there's five feet of space between the two of them. Okay. Uh, sorry, the squares like to... are not perfect, so. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Mip would like to move between those two okay. uh, devils. Um, okay. Mip's then Good going forward. to activate um, uh, Planner Warrior on uh, Bearded Devil 3, okay. and then make a couple of um, strikes. Am I now okay. flanking with Aiden? Yes, I would say you are flanking with Aiden. Okay. Uh, Is 3 first... still prone? He still has that ring on him. Um, three... Did he get up last turn? He got up last turn, so. Okay. That's a, uh, 19 to hit for the first attack. That hits. Uh, that is two. There's, uh, 
favored foe should still be active on that one too, okay. actually. Uh, that's four, six, uh, nine plus seven. That's 16 points of uh, force damage. That uh, devil falls to the ground dead in front of you. Yeah. And then I'll uh, use my remaining attack on the... Um, uh, um, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first one. Okay. That's a... Um, uh, sixteen. No, twenty-six to hit. Sorry. That hits. Um, that definitely hits. Uh, just that. That's six plus seven. That's um, uh, thirteen points of of um, magical piercing damage okay. on the uh, the devil. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, that's it. All right. Piper, you are up next. Cool. I'm going to use... Actually, first of all, I'm going to... With my little violin, I'll play this quick little tune. It's like one of those like video game style achievement unlocked kind of tune. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, to toss more, it's a bardic inspiration. And then I'm going to use my um, movement and my action to dash. Okay. Um, and I want to get um, to the point in the wall... Kind of just on the building still, but like right over by where Aiden is. Right over by Aiden is. Okay, perfect. Yes. And I'm going to kind of tuck myself in behind the wall. Okay, perfect. So just kind of just like there. Perfect. Okay. Still invisible. Cool. That's me. All right. Aiden, you are up next. All right. Um, Piper, you're, you're Bardic Inspo is a D8 now, right? Yes. Okay. I didn't, I didn't remember if we leveled up, if it changed or something. Okay. Yeah, um, Okay. Uh, first attack. Um, would I get flanking with Infernia against A? You sure would. All right. First attack is going to be. Now I got. I got to use my 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 red gray dice <laughs> for that. Uh, that is an eleven plus nine. That's a dirty twenty. That hits on the first hit on A. For. 14 slashing and 3 radiant. That one is gone. All right. Second attack then, not at advantage, is going to be on 2. I think that's a bearded devil. That is a bearded devil. Um, that is only a 12, so I'm going to use my bardic inspo to add 5 to that. That becomes a 17. That hits. All right. Thank goodness. And... That is, ooh, nice. Uh, 16 slashing and 5 radiant. That's a good okay. damage roll. Um, is 2 still standing? Uh, yes, 2 is still standing. That's actually well, the first damage I think that's been done to that one. So Let's see if it can take a DC, it's 12 plus 7, 19 athletics check to try and shield bash him prone. I rolled a... 25. Yeah, okay, he's just standing. <laughs> All Good right. try, though. I yeah, rolled a natural 19 plus 6, so... Yeah. Okay. All uh, good. Okay, Moritz, you are up next. Right. You're muted. You're... Yep, you're muted. Oh, no, you're not muted. You're just, you're just drawing things. Okay. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I'm going to go to here and okay. uh, just throw a... What is my cantrip? Firebolt at this guy in between these two. Okay, perfect. Is Hopefully. that a that's an attack roll, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a nine twenty. That hits. twenty. That hits. For eleven points of fire damage. Okay. When you hit this thing with fire and you noticed what it was, as it's come out of the lava as well, that fire does not seem to do as much damage as you had hoped to this horned devil. Okay. Okay. Bid the Devil B is now up. Let me pull up your stats. Thank you very much, sir. He is going to uh, do a t an attack with his beard on Aiden once more. What's with the beard? <laughs> he has two attacks. One with the beard, one with the glaive. Um, so that's a 19 to hit. Uh, no, Aiden ducks out of the way of that. Okay. I rolled a natural one with the glaive. So he just swings wide. He's really pissed off and just completely misses you. 
Your beard is gross, sir. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, the horned he's just got devil. His arms, like slacking aside, just just shit talking him. <laughs> the horned devil is now up, and he is going to hurl a flame towards Mip. Disadvantage for my cloak. Okay. Eighteen. Ooh, I rolled a thirteen and eleven, so the eleven plus seven seventeen to hit. Misses. Just okay. So that was the hurl flame. He's then going to try and. Uh, do a tail attack on Infernia. Seventeen, which I don't. That does not hit the dragons, so he misses completely. Bearded Devil A is now up, and he is going to attack Mip. And he's going to do two attacks with its fork. You still have okay. Still. So yep. excuse me. Uh, Seventeen to hit with a fork. Misses. Okay. Natural 20 with the tail, but it's with that disadvantage, hits. so let me roll again. 13 plus 10, 23? Uh, oh, 23 still hits. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do... So that cloaks offline So now. that's 10 points of piercing damage. 10 points. And then I need you to make a DC... Um, I need you to make a con save. D12. Uh, that is a fail. Um, okay. That's a eight. Okay. So, so I am wounded. You again. are wounded. And you're going to take two, three, four additional points of damage. And then you will take 3d6 hit points, or 3d6 Actually, damage at the beginning of each of your turn. Mip, you're within 10 feet of me. I rolled you... a seven plus one. That's uh, eight plus, uh, what's the uh, bonus? You would get plus three from me. So that would still oh that would still, would still be an fail. eleven okay yeah all right sorry yeah. so yeah so um four extra points of damage on that attack yeah okay um that's the bird of devil's turn it is now uh Sindaris's turn man I need to stop putting so many enemies in this that are fighting each other and them and everybody else let's see he is going to but it's cool it is it is cool <laughs> oh right yeah yeah. Uh, he is going to do his fire breath in a 30-foot cone. So that should not hit you guys at the Horned Devil. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Actually, he has to make a DC. He has to make a deck save. I should have been using this more often. He rolled a 6 on his deck save. So give me just one moment while I get 16 D6. Ooh. <laughs> Use that online roller. I should. Yeah, I was like, I that should. Is, yeah, so nice. Uh, Anything let's... more than like five dice, just just roll it off. <laughs> oh my god, that's yeah. beautiful. It, it's still thinking about it. Come on, dice, you're cocked. There we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, there were so many. Fifty wow. points of damage oh. to the horned devil. Half though, because it's uh... oh, yeah, half. Yeah, that's right. So we gotta, we gotta add twenty-five Shit. back. So, but. St no, that was supposed to heal. After okay. after seeing all this flame and the horn devil still kind of like, you know, whatever. He's like, whatever. Oh my goodness, I didn't notice that he must be wearing alpaca fur armor. Did you know that alpaca fur is fire resistant? And one mature ewe, a female sheep, can produce seven to ten pounds of newly torn wool a year, enough to make a man shoot. And of course, I'm just like talking to myself. Like, <laughs> right? like, I look into the camera and I'm like, did you guys know at home that? <laughs> oh, God. I just recently learned that uh, pineapple skin is similarly farm Really? It's yeah. Yeah, yes. pineapple skin is durable you shit. The so more you know. <laughs> Let's make some pineapple skin armor. Um, Infernia now seeing what her brother did is going to do the same thing to uh, this guy. Oh, I love that sound. It's so beautiful. She does 52 points of damage to have, which we will say is 26. 26. Mm -hmm. And this, this, this guy's looking really beat up now, guys. Mm. He's looking, he's looking that great. Cressida, you are up next. Cressida is going to uh, run up to Mip. Okay. And uh, cure wounds. La, 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 la. 
that will be 14 points of healing. Thank you. Let's me back up to max plus. Um, and then and that the gets rid of the wound as well, doesn't it? It does. Okay. And then the spiritual weapon is going to attack that guy that's okay. now flanked between the two of them. <laughs> okay. He is. Which one is he? He's number one, right? One. Yeah, yeah. He's one. Yeah, number one. That's 21 to hit. That definitely hits. And that's nine points of radiant damage. Cressida just pulled up Alder's Gate, guys. He's got one hit point left. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. oh. God damn it. <laughs> so cursed. close. They are cursed here. They are. Uh, but Mip is up next. Okay. Mip is going to um, just uh, use a uh, planet warrior on the uh, uh, bearded devil um, then make a uh, bid a um, rapier attacker. Uh, okay. That's a um, 24 to hit. That hits. That's 7 plus 7. That's 14 points of, of oh, uh, yeah. force damage. He's gone. <laughs> he just... Then Floats I'm going down to into up ash and nothing else. To next to uh, Aiden to um, do my remaining attack okay. on the on bearded devil. Um, okay, perfect. Two. That's a uh, fifteen to hit. That hits. That's eight plus seven. That's uh, fifteen points of um, uh, magical piercing damage. He is still up. And that's my turn. Okay. We have one of those um, viewers advertisers on. Uh, oh, okay. I will grab that. Thank you for letting me know. I believe, Piper, you are up next. Just give me one second to ban cool. this guy. There we go. You are banned. Perfect. All right. Piper, Goodbye. you are up. Bye. <laughs> All right. Um, Fiber's gonna like peek her head out from the gap in the window. Okay. Um, and turning visible as she casts this spell, uh, you see just this like sliver of like pink purple energy come out from her. Um, she's gonna throw a psychic lance oh. at the horned devil. Okay. Ooh. Hey, nice. Um, that is an intelligence save. Oh, Please boy. don't be smart. Okay. Please don't be smart. <laughs> he's not, he's not super smart. Actually, let me look at his actual stats. Um, I rolled a uh, three total. Oh, we love to see it. We love to see it. <laughs> I'm rolling it, like though. shit today, guys. Uh, you rolled like two nat twenties yeah. for a dragon. <laughs> Not right. when it yeah. mattered, though. Like, <laughs> oh hey, shit! It's a dragon. Be, Everything I mean... a dragon does matters. All right. <laughs> I was twenty-two <laughs> points of psychic damage. All right, that hits him hard, and but he is still standing. Oh, but he and then I'm gonna duck damaged. back behind the wall. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh man. Uh, eight, uh, um, and while I do that, oh, yeah. actually, I'll I'll play my little tune. It's like a little like kind of folksy tune, and I'll throw okay. Mip a Bardic Inspiration. Okay, for perfect. A duck back behind the wall. <laughs> All right. Yes. Aiden, you are up next. All right. Um, one attack at Bearded Devil. Two. That's a 13 plus 9, so that's a 22. That hits. To hit. All right. These guys hit hard, but they're not very armored. 5 plus 8, that's 13 slashing and 6 radiant. You killed that one. He's dead. All right, good. He, he'd be dead. Um, and then I'm going to use as much movement as I need to flank the Horned Devil with Sindaris, I guess. 15, so... 20, 25. Get you right, th right there. So you are now, Perfect. I would say you're flanking with both of them. Both of them are <laughs> um, That's not a thing unless you have elven accuracy, which I miss. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Rolling your uh, yeah. D20s in a row. <laughs> well, hey, I've got two witnesses here that say I rolled three nat 20s on one roll. 
um it's true at the castle with, with mark <laughs> and, mm-hmm, and jason mm-hmm. crazy. uh yeah uh attack on the horn double okay that's a 15 plus 9 that's a 24 to oh, hit that hits and we're gonna i'm gonna yeah, let gonna you progress. roll just for fun okay <laughs> but i want you to also think about how you're gonna do this mm. okay yeah so that's 10 slashing oh, yeah. and six radiant as i i'm gonna come up behind this horn devil i'm gonna shield bash it because it's bigger than me right it's, oh yeah this is a large creature Easy so it's like like you know 10 feet tall let's say shield bash him in the back of the knee and as he falls i'm gonna just stick my sword up and let him just fall back on the sword okay. so it just comes right out of his chest all right and then he just turns to like ash like as he like falls down on me perfect and as this ash falls to the ground aiden you find yourself standing face to face with two young red dragons who have now come up to you and cinderis brings his head down to your level And he says, I know your face. She has shown us. You are known to the dragons. Me. The queen. She has her eyes on you. Aiden's going to sheathe his sword. Does she know why I've come? She does not fully understand why you are here, but she knows that her brother's touch is on you. It is. We have been told you are not to be harmed, at least for the time being. So, if you and your friends leave this building to us, you will not be harmed. We will leave. This place has a it's like, why did I just scent the air like that? This place has a tragedy to it this place memory is from a far realm destroyed by greed and hubris many many years ago it has been here for quite some time and we protect the horde that is within painting stories of that world and the worlds beyond Yes, Moritz. Did I hear this? You would probably hear this. All of you would probably hear this conversation. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back up here and start looking around. Okay, you can look around. Are you going into the actual building? Oh, there's an entrance. There's I'm an entrance. Look, I look like an altar. So basically, this is an entrance. There's glass windows that have all been shattered. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. No, I'll just look at the building. Okay. And you look inside, and it, it looks like a modern-day art gallery when you peek inside. Um, many of the paintings are on the ground. There are statues that have been destroyed. But there are um, there are many different kinds of rooms with different paintings on the walls that you can still kind of see as you look in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just appreciate for what they are. Okay. Hmm. This place is in hell, and you expect to have the stories preserved here? Yes. Even though Avernus is a land of destruction and despair, we protect these stories because they were stories of destruction and despair. did they arrive here? Many years ago, the world was destroyed by a large explosion. 
this was the only building that remained, and it was pulled into the hells, and fell here. Pulled by who? Mm, pulled by Zariel, because of the hatred and despair that was held within the building and the paintings. She desired it, and we have been tasked to protect it. Not only by Zariel, but by our own master. The queen herself. Um, not go ahead. Not that we are in a place to barter. We don't want to take anything, but would you permit us entry just to gaze upon these stories? Roll a persuasion check. With advantage. Twenty-four. Hello, hmm. fights and convincing, guys. Um, <laughs> Infernia turns to you, Cressida, and says, Do not touch the paintings or the art. We will grant you permission to enter and view. But that is all. She's going to pull out her notebook. Would small sketches be inappropriate? No. You may take sketches if you would like. And Infernia then Thank turns... You. Of course. And Infernia turns back to you, Aiden. And with her claw, she reaches up onto her arm. And she plucks a scale. And she reaches out to you with her scale. A gift from the queen. And Aiden's just going to bow. Thank you. And he's going to fit it into his armor. All right. And when you do uh, that, your armor upgrades to the next level. Oh. Which means uh, I'm going to have to come up with some beasties to beat the shit out of you at this point. Good <laughs> God. Um, and as you do that, um, and this red scale attaches into your armor, you feel a slight chill. And as that chill kind of dissipates, you feel a warmth, not like the Avernus heat, but you feel this kind of warmth settle around you and on your shoulders almost as if something's mm -hmm. placing its arms on your shoulders or hands on your shoulders like 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 soup warmth <laughs> yeah like soup warm mm, soup and with that um Cinderis takes to the air and flies up to this spot and infernia takes to the air as well and settles here by this tree All right. And they will grant you entrance to this building if you wish to to do so. Aiden's going to go in and Okay. Give me just one moment to stop yes. sharing my screen. Going to remain outside. Okay. Cressida's also going to go in like charcoal at the ready. Okay. So you is a Piper Morris are you going to go it? inside? Okay. Yeah. You're both going in. Okay, Mip is going to keep watch. Okay. Oh, we have permission. Sure, stellar. Mm -hmm. So the dragons watch as you walk into this building that has really fallen to ruin. There is not much left. Um, many of the rooms inside have collapsed, but you are able to, you go into this lobby area and there are one or two rooms that still seem opened. They are very dark, so you'll either need to have dark vision or some sort, sort of light to see within them. Um, but you're able to see that there are two rooms that you could go into. Cressida is going to kind of tap her staff on the ground and the crystal the top will start to glow as she casts light. Okay. And it's odd. You've never, like I said, you've, you've seen museums before. You've seen places that have held art, but this place is very different. There are pamphlets and for some strange reason, 
devices that seem to go over the head with large things that sit over the ears. You're not sure what those are doing, but they exist. There are little boxes that seem to be attached to these. None of them work, but they have buttons that you could press. And beyond are the two rooms that you can go into. Aiden's going to just very solemnly kind of walk around and look at this, look at the everything, just okay. try and take it all in, try and commit as much of it to memory. Right. In one room, you see a painting and it's, it's odd. It looks like it happened in Avernus. There's fire everywhere, um, but it appears to be a woman with wings strapped to a pyre being burned alive. In another painting, you see a war among dragons and other beings as well, fae, human, elf. You see another painting with black Icarus creatures and they're reaching around this, another being, kind of in, enveloping it and taking into itself. You see paintings of someone who looks almost like a dragon. His eyes are like slits, but you can't quite tell if he's dragon or not. But he is with another woman who has wings, dressed in purple, a large mace at her side. You see another small human or small being next to him carrying what seems to be a large hammer, probably too large for this fairy, but she is carrying a very large hammer. The rest are burned to a crisp. There are some statues that have fallen, but for the most part, you're able to see most of these paintings here in this room and the other room as well. It's gonna to go to this painting of these three figures He's going to pull out his immovable rod and he's going to just take it like hair's breadth away from the edge of the frame and flick it so that nothing can move this painting. Okay. And he's going to leave his immovable rod here. Okay. Piper, Cressida, Moritz. What are you looking at in this building? Is there any particular thing that you wanted to see or try to find? Piper's playing with one of those little box devices. Okay. And as you <laughs> press the buttons, it's it's weird. It, like you'll you'll get, you know, when you press play on something, but the battery's broken, the battery's drained, and it goes it 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 it, it, it. like it's trying to say words, but you can't really understand what it's saying because it, the battery has drained. Essentially, has no energy left. But you hear this do it. Hey, that. I think she's like clicking it a few times and she's like holding it up to her ear. And then she's just going to shuffle it in her bag. Okay. Mortz, are you doing anything in particular in this building? Mm. No. Okay. No, yeah, I'm just looking at the paintings. All right. So you're able to view what's left of this building inside. Not much is left, but just enough to tell that the dragons were right. These stories were were tragic and sad and full of despair. Um, what would you like to do as you exit? Um, I think I'll probably be the last one to leave, okay. but I'll just wait until everyone files out and mutter a little prayer to the king and the queen now for what he feels like is taking the first and smallest step that like okay she understands that i am more or less here as a messenger and these two have just confirmed that all right she's not going to shoot the messenger at least not this time. At least time. not yet. Yeah. 
So, okay. Leave something for this monument, a little token. I'm not touching anything. I'm just, this is my addition to it. To respect it, to honor it. And I'm just going to head out. And as you come out, um, Infernia and Sindaris are now kind of curled up, as you would imagine a young dog, you know, a young dragon might be curling up for its nightly nap. Um, and Infernia, when she sees you all, like that, she opens one eye and then closes it again and goes back to rest. Um, Mip, while you were outside, were you doing anything? I would have liked to ask them. Sure how how they came to be in hell themselves okay. um and infernia would approach you slowly and kind of lean down to you and kind of almost lay down so that she's on the same level as you and she would say we were born here we have always been here we will probably die here that seems undeserving hmm we like it here. As red dragons, we are used to heat and flame. It suits us. I'm glad. Little one, you are not from here. No. But I get the feeling that's where I'm going to end up being. And she kind of cocks her head. Why would you say that? You've defeated devils. Why would you belong here? I've murdered people. Hmm. Been abandoned to the or just portion of my life. What you have done in the past, small one, is not a reflection on where you will end up if you change, if you do good. That does not mean you will end up in the hells. Everyone has choices to make, good and bad each one weighing against the other. It is up to you how you balance those choices. Thank you. Of course. And she kind of goes back and curls back up into her little dragon ball. Z. <laughs> <laughs> And as you all exit out of um, this museum, you do see the two dragons lying there. Um, the bodies of the devils have all kind of turned to dust and have kind of floated away in the heat and the wind. Um, but what would you like to do at this point? Actually, I need you all to do something for me. I need everybody to roll a con save. Hell. Now that I think okay. about it. All right. Let me, let me find my notes here, because th there's lots of stuff in Avernus, guys. Oh, it's, very, it's, it's very complicated. Let's see. Um, Where is my stuff here that I need? <laughs> Hold on. I gotta is this a it. magical effect? This is not a magical effect. No, this is an environmental effect. This is an environmental uh, effect. Do do resistances um, come into play at all here? Um, I don't know. What did you guys all roll? Bad. I rolled bad. I rolled an eight. I also rolled an eight. <laughs> Thirteen. If you rolled a uh, below a, t a ten or below, you are going to take one level of exhaustion, just Yay. because of the oppressive yep. heat and the evil that is here. Yep. What if I'm resistant to fire and necrotic? <laughs> no, you're still going to take one level of exhaustion. Okay. So that's nice dry. kind of where you're at. Cressida has been sub like subconsciously fanning herself with her new wings, so the heat doesn't seem to bother her as much. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sorcerers with their uh, yeah. Normal their travel to Avernus is 
shitty. <laughs> yeah. So you take um everybody who rolled like I said rolls a take takes a level of exhaustion for right now. <laughs> Did Aiden say that out loud or was that just just uh No, that's Devin? just me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And you all kind of feel the heat of this, the weight of this heat, and just the oppression of Avernus just kind of weigh you down uh, for the time being. Just narratively, as they're leaving, Cressida takes one of the pamphlets okay. and tucks it in her notebook. Okay. And the dragons would have so no issue can... with you taking a pamphlet. There's so many of them. And they're all the same. So you're good. Cogita. Ah, Cogita. Okay. That makes sense with CGPL now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crescent is like holding the pamphlet out, being like, yeah, so this is what you missed on the, the inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. S strange. I wonder... hearing, hearing that name, mm -hmm. Aiden's just kind of kind of unconsciously mutter a name out loud, and I don't know if the dragons will hear it, but he'll just go, Barash. Sindaris perks up when you say that. You know that name. No. It just sprang to mind. Ah. Was Barash, an ancestor of yours? I don't believe so. From another realm? Perhaps. I don't know, though. It is a okay. name we found inside the museum. Are there other knowledges from within the museum? gallery that you feel we should be privy to? No. The knowledge from this museum is from another realm entirely. Other than knowing the stories, there is likely nothing that would help you here. She's going to pull up her like rough sketch of the three. Mm -hmm. Could you help me title this then? Do you know who they are? They were heroes. They were heroes who tried to stop this realm from falling. And no matter how hard they tried, they could not stop it. What use were the devils that we um fended off here what use were what, sorry i missed that what use did the devils have for what was in this mm. place why were they here the to devils take it from you hoped to gain the stories and take the knowledge to find new ways to torture and harm people who were trapped here who ordered them who ordered the devils? Yeah. Zarya well, herself. Okay. She's always in look in search of new ways to torture and harm people. But our lady the queen wants the building left intact. Thank you. Of course. Beware the heat and the evil here. It will tire you out very quickly. I'm not feeling it. As she says, I'm going to ritual cast uh, floating disc. Okay. <laughs> And Ten which, minutes later. Ten minutes later. <laughs> uh, and would you all like to continue towards Fort Knucklebone at this point? Yeah, I think so. FND. 
Cressida's going to pull out the key and be like, just look at the group. If anyone is requiring respite, please don't hesitate to let me know. This may affect all of us very differently. How many of us failed that check? Most of all you. All one. <laughs> yeah, all except for Cressida. It's just a level of exhaustion. I've, I've, I've had worse. Yeah. And Sindaris is going to kind of look up again and say, rests are well needed here. If you can take one, I would recommend it. However, you are also not far from Fort Nokovan, if that is where I heard you are headed. Do you know if there are other devils that lie between our current location and the fort? There are always devils, often demons, in this plane, due to the blood war. There are also devils who drive infernal machines across the sands. I would be weary. And hide if you see them. Let's... let's... let's rest. How, how far away is Fort well, Knucklebone? How long? How... It, it is about... As the dragon flies, a two-hour flight. It would probably take you most of the rest of the day to get there. Yep. That's far too long to be out in the open feeling the way that you guys look. No offense. Yeah. You all kind of look like shit. Got hit with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> then I, could, I could stand to shower that off. <laughs> Thank you to the both of you. For your knowledge, and she's going to pull the key out and turn it and make a door. We will rest. And she'll push the door open to the mansion. Right. I'm going to start hurting everyone inside. And as you enter in, it's almost as like, you know, those really hot days when it's like 115 degrees outside and you walk into some place that's air conditioned. And it's like almost instant relief as the presence of the evil kind of lifts off you and the heat lifts off as you walk into this very cool mansion that is protected from the evil outside as well as the heat. And we're going to take our 10 minute break here to give you guys a few minutes to recoup and take a rest and think about what you guys want to do in the mansion before we move on. So we will be back in All about right. 10 minutes. Everybody stay tuned. We shall return shortly. I'm going to hit okay. the BRB scene. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are out. I need to find it.
Yes, hi, we're back from our break. I'm going to turn our music down so that you guys can actually hear what we're saying. Wait, what? Right. <laughs> Welcome back from the break, everybody. I'm going to make sure that goes. Why are you not full screen? Zoom. Oh, it is full screen. I don't know why it's doing that. That's weird. Okay. Anyway, we're back. Uh, you guys have just uh, finished encountering some dragons, as well as a bunch of devils. Ex explored a an old otherworldly art museum and have decided to take respite in the museum or not in the museum in the mansion um, due to some levels of exhaustion as part of going through Avernus. The time is now yours. What would you all like to do? Aiden's gonna go back to his room for a little bit um kind of sit at his shrine and look at his scale and look at how he's kind of changed because he doesn't remember noticing that like he's a little paler now and the veins that he can see under his skin yeah at, at his wrists and his palm you know the, the thin spots aren't their normal like red or blue they're kind of metallic and he's just kind of unsettled by that a little bit um he's gonna sit with steeple and think about answer talking to him again and kind of what that meant why what where why now has answer been with him ha, has it, he didn't expect to hear from him down here and he he's felt like ever since he kind of puppeted him back in Baldur's Gate that he's kept answer at arm's length just kind of uncomfortable with what he did um, he, so he's just going to kind of sit there for a while and settle himself kind of steady, try and, try and literally and, and metaphorically cool off before he kind of rejoins the party and whatever they're doing in the house. And while you're sitting there at your shrine, I would like you to roll a perception check. Okay. Um, is this going to be at disadvantage still because of the exhaustion? Or I will is... say okay. no. I'll say this is a straight roll. Okay. Straight roll. Wow, that rolled completely out of the tray. Uh, that's a 13 plus nothing. 13. Perception. So as you're sitting there, you're in front of your shrine to Bahamut. You're thinking about Anser. And you feel the air change. You know that feeling you get when you can sense electricity in the air? your the hair on your skin kind of rises and you feel just kind of an electrical feeling there but you don't quite know what it is but you get the sense that you're being not watched in a bad way somebody is there watching over you did you If you need to say something to me, just say it. I'll listen. I was... I was scared for. I... I was. You... You, you scared me with what you did. And it didn't feel right. It, it was... It just... They used to tell my, you know, mom and dad, you know, you, they asked me to do something when I'm a kid. Like, of course I'm going to do it. But just asking, it just makes you kind of not want to. Like, I would have taken the oath. I would have. I, I, <laughs> you had to know there was no doubt in my mind. But I think I want to be more mad than I am. And if you're here... 
I appreciate it. And it takes a moment, but you hear a low whisper, whether it's around you or in your head, you're not sure. All beings make mistakes. I am sorry for what I did. And the voice fades. Forgive you. And you feel a rise in that electricity and you actually see small sparks just kind of go across your skin. Not affecting you in any way. You just see it as some kind of sign that Anser has hurt you. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I can even, like, feel them, like, between my fingertips as Mm -hmm. I'm, like, kind of flexing my hand and just. All right. I'm glad to have you back. Um, and Aiden's going to kind of kind of suppress down, kind of shrug down his armor and just kind of sit in his uniform for a bit and mess around with Steeple a little bit and then go and kind of rejoin the party in the house proper, okay. wherever they are. Mort, so are you doing anything in particular in the mansion before you meet up with everybody else? Um, I'm kind of flipping through the pages of my uh, manual of the planes, uh, kind of more so trying to reread anything about the nine howls that I've perhaps missed. Um, kind of glimpsing over Durr and um, kind of preparing our, like preparing my own mindset for like what's gonna perhaps come or dis part of me dis. what's what's gonna kind of happen per se like just mentally preparing myself and then um was this like a was this a short rest long rest that's up to you Any guys. Kind of... probably a okay. long i would imagine it's a long rest considering a long rest? Oh, okay. yeah it's a once a day i would rest. imagine this would turn into a long rest yeah i just don't yeah, know if we can fund one yet or if yeah. it's Okay, and just kind of work with Gerald and rearrange some spells. All right, Mip. That's about it. After spending a little bit of time just hanging out in the dining room, Mip would actually knock on Moritz's door. Okay. Yes, come in. Hi. Marts. Yeah, what what can I do for you, my boy? I forgot to turn the captions on. There's been some strange things going on. And you've made some decisions regarding Are you okay? Why yes, Mip? I'm 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 as vigorous as I was when I was in my thirties. Why why did you ask? Just worried and I wanna understand why you why you wanted that shield before why you didn't have it taken in like we thought you were going to well i it promised us our and Quite frankly, if we're up against someone that's quite formidable, I believe that we need power absolute. Okay. You've been... I know you've had your will taken from you a couple of times since you've been here.
What's that like? Having my will taken from me? Who attacked us when we got here? Uh, well, that wasn't entirely me. That was. That's why I of... asked. You, you know, the, the thing is, when you're fighting these devils, if you don't have your mental wall up where it should be, it's, you can turn on one another. That's why I'm asking. And. Because it could happen to me, it could happen to any of us. Absolutely. And you're right. We could probably do with more power on our side. If we were up against Zario. I've never once read in my studies that more power leads to more problems. In fact, it solves a lot of problems. And that could be a metaphor for anything. Could be a metaphor for currency. It could be a metaphor for friendship. It could be a metaphor for magic of prowl prowless. It chips problems away from ourselves and onto other people sometimes. That's the issue. Making sure that wherever power we gain doesn't cause someone else harm. You were on the way to Waterdeep when we met you. Yes. Why? I received a letter from a colleague of mine who wished to uh, rendezvous in Waterdeep. And I was on my way to, well, rendezvous with him. Okay. This is... This, you don't remember your time at... Um, I've forgotten the name of the place again, sorry. Strixhaven? Uh, Strixhaven, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Strixhaven, yeah. It is coming back to me. I do remember quite a bit of my time, and oh, was I ever a succulent reminder of my own insecurities? But um, with the help of Nessa here, she's uh, helped me a lot, actually. How do you remember your colleague that sent you the letter? Like I said, my memories are coming back to me. I, that's all I had. I had I had this pamphlet, and I show Mip. I don't know if he can see anything or. Yep, he can see it. He can read it. Okay. What's it say? The pamphlet. Just says. Uh... Say more. It's... Sorry. What does the pamphlet say? Pamphlet says, um, Mort. You are required, your, no, your presence is required in Waterdeep. I wish to discuss a few things with you in person. Signed, BC. Hmm. This is BC. Who's BC? Balthazar Chutwind. Balthazar Chutwind. Can't say I know him. Some wizard folk and sorcerers don't wish to make a big name for themselves. They live modest lives. That was kind of what was bestowed upon me when my studies got a little bit out of hand, and they decided to give me a more humble uh, upbringing, so to speak. So They took your memories from you and, and why did you continue traveling with us after? Um, 
just After seems... Elder Al? Yeah. Well, you know, I it kind of just goes like this, you know? We, we took a riverboat, and then we got deputized, and then I enjoyed your company as well, and young Master Aiden over there, he was quite... I admire his growth. It's it's very inspiring. It reminds me of a few tales I've read, like King Arthur and Spider Man, <laughs> and you know, it's just it's amazing. More so... test tomes from far, far, far worlds. Yeah, Apparently, yeah. <laughs> King Arthur's Spider-Man? <laughs> you know, they're King really Arthur's just the same premise. <laughs> Pocahontas, Avatar, like, it, they're just, it's just the same thing, just different skins. I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I became inspired by your group and your strings of fates intertwined, and uh, I've never quite had that. And My colleague Balthazar would understand is... He has traveled a few places, and I would need to entertain him with some stories, so here I am. Plus, I've read about this place, and, you know, you read about places, and you never go there, you know? And it's always secondhand accounts, and you don't really get a feel for somewhere until you've been there, you know? Like, this place named India, you don't probably never have heard of it, but it's a very bustling place, and there's... You see everything about life in just a span of a few moments of being there. But some will say it's busy and lots of people. But then you go to other places around and it's beautiful. And the trees and the sand and animals. Yeah. Okay. Just just travel more, Master Mip. That's what I that's where I was alluding to. Okay. Thank you for traveling with us and helping with us while you, where you can. That's all I try to do, Miss Master Mip. With the thing, way things are at the moment, I'm feeling like maybe we should take more time to get to know each other better. Everyone, I mean. Things are dangerous. Mip, are you in Moritz's room when you say that? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna wait for everyone in the dining room. I shall join you shortly, Master Mip. I'm just finishing a few few spells, and Gerald will be ready to go, and I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Piper, what would you like to do? Uh, Piper is going to go to the mansion's little library. Okay. I think she just finds like the table, um, and she'll take out her journal. And she's just writing in her journal. And it's it's really just like a like stream of conscious like ideas on a piece of paper. Um, she's writing down like this concept for a story about these like three nameless heroes that like failed to save their world. Um, and she's flipping back between pages and she's adding things to her little outline about like the tale of Zariel. She makes a note about like Zariel collecting or wanting to collect like painful or like dark things. Uh, and she's just writing. All right. And Cressida. Cressida seeing how like haggard El Terrell has made everyone is in the kitchen attempting to fix up some sort of snack uh, to like boost morale as well as get um, 
better acquainted with those bronze utensils that she has. So she's trying to like utilize them to make food buffs. Um, okay, perfect. At this, yeah. <laughs> but also she's trying to figure out <laughs> in my head, she was awkward before, but now she has wings. <laughs> so t- turning one way and like knocking into things and whatnot, <laughs> she's more of a <laughs> force of nature than she was before. <laughs> And about an hour passes um, of you all taking kind of your own time in the mansion when suddenly you hear this long ding, ding, ding. And you realize this is the mansion calling you all to dinner or to have snacks, whatever Cressida would like. Um, but you all come out of your rooms and down the stairs and there's a doorway open um, into what looks like a very cozy room and, um, even though the fireplace is burning in this room, um, it's not overly hot. You don't feel overly heated. You're very comfortable. There are plush couches and bean bags and all sorts of different kinds of seats for you to sit on. There's also a variety of snacks and food laid out as well as drinks. And the room and the space is yours to do however you'd like. Yep, sorry, sound is high chair. <laughs> In his high chair with little feet out. Little tree. <laughs> so Cressida, um, in order to kind of like break the reprieve and everyone's feeling exhausted, you kind of see before you a lovely kind of like charcuterie style light eats. You can eat as much as like bread, cheese, fruits as you'd like, but it's all just like easy things. And then Cressida is going to go up with like this little plate of like she's done her best to try to like cut flowers out of carrots and things like that (laughs) with these bronze utensils and she'll walk over to Mip um last week I gave Aiden the inspiration meal and um this week I thought maybe you could give it a try I can't Um, promise how great it will be uh I'm sure it'll be nice thank you uh how does that work again so um, you get advantage on um, persuasion, intimidation, or deception check. Four, right. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. What kind no, of no problem. meal did you uh, produce? <laughs> so it's like a like a trying to be the most aesthetically pretty little charcuterie plate that you've seen so like all these little carrots are like cut into flowers and then she's like taken spinach and like cut the edges so it looks more elegant so you can kind of like build a little sandwich of like crackers and vegetables and cheese but all of it looks slightly floral (laughs) (laughs) well this is certainly the nicest i've eaten in a long while (laughs) thank you my pleasure. Right, she'll go right. and she'll build herself a plate and curl up on one of the couches. Okay. What is everybody else doing? You know, I think we should steal one of those infernal engines because, like, it would just make traversing for you guys so much easier. I mean, maybe not you, Crash, because you can fly, I guess, but, you know, just for us common folk that just float and walk. I think um, hopefully We'll be able to Ooh, have some meat. <laughs> For knuckle bones, that's where Chucker and Clonk are. That um, hopefully Lulu mentioned. Anyway. And as you as you say that, uh, Lulu, who is kind of sitting in a corner, just kind of munching on some frozen grapes, perks up and she goes, "Yes, Chucker and Clonk are at Fort Knucklebone with a whole bunch of other people." Um. Yeah. Uh, With a whole bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. Are they people we should be concerned about? I mean... They're, they're, they'll be nice to you if you're nice to them. Most likely. Okay, so not like devils or demons or anything of the no, sort. No, no, there are definitely probably some demons. Or devils there, not demons. They wouldn't let demons in. But there's probably some devils there, but usually the fort itself kind of has a no violence policy. As long as you don't start it, you're fine. 
what do you did what do you shook it and clunk do there? Do you remember? They're mechanics. They help build things. Like There's a lady there who builds who builds the big things. They're huge and they're loud and they go across the sand with wheels. I don't know See, what See, we might not even have to steal one, Moritz. Hmm. Steal, borrow, would be a decision concept of time. Eventually no, we'll Moritz, go to the Those are range. different things. <laughs> well, if you own it or if you steal it, you're just borrowing it indefinitely. So. Like the shield. Well, yeah, I, th I guess we stole the shield if, it, if that using your verbiage. We didn't steal shit. Oh, and my Aiden says Russia that. Aiden. Moritz. You know, you're right, Master. I need Aiden. to know why. That's a very vague question, young Master Aiden. I need to know why you lied to us. <sighs> Master Aiden. I mean no offense in my statement. I hope you are un I hope you realize. But we being how you say level five, four, five, six, something less than twenty. We are not strong and I felt that we needed power. The shield promised us power. So why I brought the shield is because we need the power. How much power can you get from a disgraced fiend locked in a disc? How much power can something in prison give you? More than you can imagine, remong Master Aiden. Aiden's going to go know. over to the bag of holding and pull the shield out. Oh, sure. Young Master Aiden can pull the shield out, but if I try <laughs> to destroy it, oh, no. Bad, you're bad, Mr. Mort. Aiden's going to stop as he reaches his hand in. How is you're going to destroy it? Well, I was going to send it where no one else can get it, but um, it's fine. We tried that, and then you interfered. No, and... no, no, no. If, if you Sorry, Aiden, correctly. it was actually... The other way around. Enough. Yeah. I intervened to stop the destruction because I thought the bag of holding had more value than the destruction of the shield. And I'm talking about back at Candlekeep when we had a chance to throw it into a bottomless hole that nothing could ever reach it in. And Moritz kept it. Wait, is that how that went? I don't actually know. Exactly recall. how it worked. <laughs> Oh, I thought the someone was going to study it, and then I was like, yeah, I'll bring it no. back later. No, we asked them, rather than to not study it, to throw it into an endless pocket void and throw away the key. And you said that you would deliver it to Sevilra, and then you kept it. You lied to us. You brought a dangerous relic that we don't know to El Terrell. We know it was dangerous enough for people to kill each other over in Baldur's Gate as it was being used to help facilitate the destruction of our home. Yes, mortal men, yes. Mortz, you said yes? more power than you can imagine. How much do you know what kind of power it can provide? Well, you know... Aiden cast Zone of Truth. Well, this is going to be difficult. Um, uh, we can't hear oh, you. Your, your mic is. Sorry, I there. was didn't want to disturb while you guys were hashing it out. What does Zone of Truth do? Read it to me. I uh, create a magical zone that guards against deception in a 15 foot radius sphere centered on a point of your choice within range. Until the spell ends, a creature that enters the spell for the first time or starts its turn there must make a charisma save. Okay. On a failed save, the creature can't speak a deliberate lie while in the radius. Okay. Counter spell. Oh, shit. The spell. <laughs> okay. Young Master Aiden, I do not enjoy your parlor tricks. 
you do not wish me to accompany you on your said endeavors, you can just say so yourself. I don't wish anyone to follow us that we can't trust. I don't wish anyone to join us that would put their own needs ahead of the needs of all of us, ahead of the needs of people of El Terrell that we were sent to save, ahead of the people of Baldur's Gate that we had to save. The what do you value, Moritz? Do you value this mission? Do you value us? Or is this a pleasure cruise for you? Well, as I had mentioned to Master Mip, I am here because it uh, it seemed interesting, seemed entertaining. Now, as for your other questions, do I disregard your lives? No, I do not disregard your lives. I had a chance to cast the shield into the abyssal sea where it would be lost for a long, long time. Candle, candle, yeah, candle keep. Candle keep at the end of the day is a physical keep. It can be raided, it can be destroyed, it can be seized, but the abyssal sea is forever. Astral sea, but you're right. Astral sea, thank you. And young Cressida stopped it. Aiden, you okay. have the shield out, right? Um, I think at this point, once he counterspelled, yeah, I pulled the shield out. Okay. Roll a uh, roll a wisdom save. Wisdom save. Okay. And at this point, because we haven't rested, is that level of exhaustion coming into play for everyone here? I would have thought so. Yeah. Well, I I pretty much said it's on though. ability checks though. Yeah. This is a save. Yeah. I rolled a it's dirty a twenty. Ooh, okay. So you feel this um kind of itch at the back of your brain, um, something trying to wink its way in to talk to you, but um you're able to push it away. Yeah. Continue. Moritz, sorry. I'm sorry, where were we? <laughs> you were explaining how throwing it into an unreachable bottomless hole was worse than throwing it into the Astral Sea where stuff in the Astral Sea could get it. Well, what if we needed it back? We what? don't we don't know exactly what this shield can do. All we need all we know <laughs> is that it has immense power. And we need power. You seem to know enough about it to know that it's more valuable with us than away from us. I'm going to turn to the shield. I'm going to put my hand right on the shield. And I'm going to say, tell me what you offered him. Roll a persuasion or an intimidation check. Your choice. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll... I will roll persuasion. And I'm going to activate my channel divinity, my metallic splendor, so that gives me advantage on persuasion, okay. insight, and performance. Okay. That's a 14 plus 6. That's also a dirty 20. Okay. In your head, nobody else hears this. I offered him power and all of you assistance in exchange for my freedom. What kind of power can a fiend in a box offer? Many different kinds of power. It really just depends on what you want. My insight check that. Absolutely. Uh, that's, uh, that's only a nine. The shield is being honest. 
it is it wants its freedom and it's willing to exchange some sort of power or assistance oh in exchange for helping it escape its prison essentially I take my hand off the shield nothing makes sense you want power but you seem to have no interest in using it for the good of El Terrell I, I I don't trust you, Moritz. I don't trust you with it. I want to trust you. Gods know I do. I, I thought you were learning magic. I thought you were trying to grow. I thought you had finally found something in life that you were aiming for and now you just is that all is it you just want power you just want what power to do what i don't want to interject on either side but from the outside it almost sounds like Moritz was hoping to keep the shield as a Hail Mary. If we got in over our heads and we needed a dip more than we have, that it could provide some sort of boost. Not to say that the way he went about it is right or wrong, but to me that sounds like his logic. Moritz, am I at all on the right path or am I completely out to lunch? You know, it reminds me of this universe where they decided to get rid of nuclear bombs. Think of like a firebomb, but like 27,000 D6s. And so they all agreed to get rid of them, except for one. And then you know what happens? They took over the world. So yes, Cressida, that's exactly what I am implying, that it is our nuclear bomb, our Hail Mary, our see you later, Miss... What's her name? Azrael. So Sorry. you want to take over Zariel, the world? Azrael, whatever. There's stronger it's... demons out there. I think what he is actually saying is that if we get rid of everything that might potentially be bad, then what are we left with? And we leave Zariel with all of that power, all of that ability... This... Young Master Aiden, that is the problem with you paladins, is that you only see in linear lines where magic is a weave of good and bad. There's power in the good and there's power in the bad. Just about to make one point, though. Yes, Maybe Master. Maybe it's a little naive to think that whatever is in that shield has power that it can offer us but it can't use to get itself out of a shield exactly like fire is weak to water water is weak to earth so to speak there's like pluses and minuses there but my point is perhaps is very strong magic that's binding said thing in there, but it's stronger elsewhere. Who knows? And we do find ourselves in the land of demons and devils and deals. Perhaps that shield was his fate for a deal gone wrong. Wasn't it I... something trapped in there by someone else? What reason was it trapped in there for? That's what we don't 
No. Do you have I, I... the ability to cast that zone of truth again, Aiden? I don't know Moritz, do I? I'm not saying use it on Moritz. I'm saying use it on the shield. Moritz, Young... stand away from the, sh the um, zone of truth and Aiden, if you don't want to tell the truth, but we need to know something from this. Young Master Aiden, as a famous wizard once said, I'm not trying to rob you, but I'm trying to help <laughs> you. I wish you would trust me. And I get up from the table. Does Moritz leave? No, no. Master Mip just told me to get up, right? I just said get away so that you don't have to suffer the oh. uh, zone of truth. <laughs> yeah. Aiden casts his own of truth. On the shield? Well, it's an aura. So it's, aura? it's okay. It, it affects everybody who's in range of it. Like so it would have more it stopped everyone from telling the truth, mm -hmm. not just himself. Okay. Yeah, well, he didn't back out. Which, in, which in Aiden's mind indicts more it's as untrustworthy more than anything else he's done. Okay. What save is it for the zone? It is a charisma save. Um DC 14. Okay. I rolled a 15 total. 8 plus 7. Okay. Um, I know that it failed then. It... So I know that nothing I ask it will intrinsically be true. So. You hear in your mind again. No need to cast. I will tell the truth. You already know. I told you the truth previously. I have no reason to lie. All I want is my freedom. What do you want to know, young paladin? And this is just a conversation that yeah, this in your head. Shield and I can hear. Telepathic, okay. yeah. I want to know what Moritz has told you. Moritz has told me nothing. Nothing of his past that he suddenly remembers. Nothing of his intentions. Nothing of his admiration for this Hallister mage he continually refers to no he has told me nothing he has just brought me along with you as i wished you can roll an insight check if you want okay no that's only a 14. shield's telling the truth Are you speaking this out loud at the same time? No. It's all no. telepathic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aiden's eyes have like rolled up into his head as he's got his hand on this shield on the dining room table. Cressida doesn't do well with confrontation, so she's walked over to the side and she's opened a bottle of wine and she's offering <laughs> Piper some. <laughs> well, while you are in this room, it begins to shift. And Cressida, you've never seen the house do this before. But suddenly, and it's almost like you all of you are warped into the library. All in the same positions you were previously. And from one shelf, very high up, a book starts to wiggle its way out from the shelves and drops to the ground in front of you, Aiden. That'll shake Aiden out of this. <clears throat> he'll look around like, did someone drop that? And he'll pick it up. What is it? It's a plain black leather book, relatively small 
has a, a small latch on it. It's not locked. No title on it. He'll open it and just let it fall to whatever page it falls to. All right. It seems to be some sort of journal. Um, and it talks about how this archdevil Gargoth was exiled from the Nine Hells under pain of complete destruction. It wants to go back to where it would be completely destroyed. And then you hear in your head again, I want my vengeance on those who exiled me. I could be destroyed, but I could also destroy them. I'm going to insight check, especially okay. the second part of that. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's a 17. He's telling the truth. You could destroy... You you could destroy an arch devil of the hells. You who are you trapped in a plate. Read the journal. And it continues to tell Gargoth's story that he was ultimately responsible for the destruction of the realm of Pelaverin by manipulating two dozen very powerful mem members of the Cult of the Dragon. He essentially had achieved lesser god status when his cult blossomed during the Harpster Wars, but the concerted efforts of the churches of Bane, Baal, Leviathar, and Talona crushed his followers and trapped him in the shield. And that is where his journal ends. Manipulated a bunch of people to do his bidding, destroyed a world, and you brought him right back. If you release me, I will do no harm to you or your party. I simply seek my vengeance. On Loviatar and Bane and Baal? Yes. And Bishaba? So it was Bishaba the Talona. 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 That's right. Poison. Not bad luck. Okay. <laughs> and he accuses me of being the naive one. Uh, I... It is a simple feat. There has been, and Aiden's going to say this out loud, there has been nothing simple about what we've done to this point. Free me, and I will leave. I will seek my vengeance. You will never see me again. I'm not worried about me. That's your biggest misconception. You should have listened to the old man. It's too straight line with me. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about what you're going to do to everyone and everything else. And all you've done is prove that I can't trust you. Uh, Aiden's going to take his hand off the shield and just shake his head in disbelief that in the place we are, we've crossed the border between planes to save a city and save all of these people and affect so much more than ourselves that this wizard and this fiend are so focused on their own little things that it's absurd to him and he's gonna shove the shield away from him on the table and sit back and end his spell 
and just sink his head into his hands. Are you all right, Preston? Preston's no. gonna pick the shield back up and just tuck it into the bag of holding. Okay. I'm not all right, man. What's the plan? I don't think there is one anymore. Plan remains the same. We go to Fort Knuckle Bones. We figure out what we need to figure out. Then we take it from there. And if one little hiccup is enough to sway you from having that plan, then maybe we're all valuable. Maybe we're all in our own ways absorbed in what we want. Everybody has their breaking point. Everybody has their limit. Everybody fails. I've spent my whole life reading those stories, writing those stories. And it's always the same. Blindness, hubris. But what we need to do right now is stick together. We got this far. And if we're going to let some petty argument get in the way of the bigger picture here, then maybe none of us will ever get anywhere. But we put this aside. We learn from this. All of us have our own motives. All of us have those things that we want for ourselves above the greater good of things, even you, Aiden, I think deep down, somewhere along the way, you have a limit. And that's why we're stronger together. Because what one, what limits one of us, strengthens another. So we learn, maybe not to trust each other, but to rely on each other. I would like to point out with regards to Moritz, his actions helping us, it's largely only since the only times it's been a problem is when he's been taken over by someone else's will. At all other times, he has aided us. And maybe he's made some dubious choices, but it's not been specifically to detriment us. Moritz is our friend. He's going to cast his own of truth one more time. Don't. Very visibly. Where are you casting it? I, I'm casting it on myself. Okay. Counterspell. Pipe. Aiden leaves. Aiden. Mip. Look. Forcing someone to tell the truth is just as bad as t forcing someone to take an oath. Have any of you approached? Have any of you taken a step toward me? You're all over there. Yeah. You're all against the walls. I'm standing here because I want you to see that I'm being honest with you beyond the shadow of a doubt. And if you don't want to hear that, Moritz, fine. I have no reason to Aiden not trust away. you, Master Aiden. Sometimes 
us paladins like to perform what you call the gesture of faith. In this case, I was about to level with some of you. As you're all standing there, the shield out on the table before you, you noticed it start to shudder and shift. And oh, I thought I tucked it back into the bag. Oh, did yeah. you tuck it back into the bag? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 In the bag of holding, Cressida, if the whole bag of holding is with you, you feel it start to shudder and shift. You've never had the bag of holding do this before. But something is happening inside the bag of holding at this point. And as you're also standing there, you notice the walls around you start to shudder and shift. And suddenly the mansion dissipates. And in front of you, you see a large devilish army. Probably... 30 or 40 people in this unit, de devils in this unit, led by a very large pit fiend. Hand over the shield right now. We know you have it. It does not belong here. It must be banished. Give us the shield, you're like, and we like will out leave. In the you are of out. Again? You're you're back out. Oh, on shit. the on the on the um dais of the art museum. The two dragons are also there. They're just watching. They don't know what's going on. But you are surrounded by thirty to forty devils, along with a pit fiend, demanding the shield because they want it out of Avernus. Give it to us, and we will leave you in peace, at least until our paths cross again. Is this a pit fiend that we saw at at El Terrell? Didn't we see a pit fiend, like, in the army? You did not see... Well, I mean, there were lots of pit fiends in the army. Okay. You don't... You, may not, like you probably saw, didn't like, necessarily okay. see... It may not have been the same one you saw, um... But they do not want this shield in Avernus. They want it gone. And as they're waiting for an answer, the devils are now surrounding all of you. I think we need to hand it over. I don't think we can get through this. You have five Hayden seconds. is unarmored and unarmed right now. He is in no position to bargain. He left all his shit put away. Well, Master Aiden, you at best might want to call your friends over there for help. Uh, okay, one sec. Cressida is going to like subtly point towards Piper. Or she was able to keep a cool head about And the everything pit fiend is going earlier. to start heading towards the bag of holding. Aiden will we interpose himself. Do, do we let I just just go? The, the, this is to the pit fiend, not to you, Cressida. Stand aside, Paladin. We know you are protected. You are not that well protected. Hand over the shield and we will leave. You have Cressida? ten seconds. One. Cressida. Piper leans over to Cressida. Two. I, I cast Vortex Warp. You cast what? Vortex, Vortex Warp on the Pit Fiend. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, I want to keep him away from the shield. Nick. This is the DM talking. Are you sure you want to do that? I 
damn above table, I would not recommend fighting these guys. They will yeah. destroy you. I never said fighting. I just want to get them away from the that, shield. Uh, yes, that decision uh, will really... cause combat above table. Aiden was in the process of telling Cressida to open the bag. Just okay. slowly, The pit feet will point just... towards Moritz and say, Do not, old man. I will send your soul to the level of hell where no one will ever find you. And what was Piper responding to from Cressida's message? Uh, Piper will very quietly in response say, I don't think there's really an option here. Six. Cressida will slowly open the bag and place her hand in to summon the shield. Okay. And you summon the shield and it's pulled out. And you do hear in your voice, do not hand me over, they will destroy me. But as you pull it out, two flying imps come and grab the shield from you. Take when I hear hear that in my head, I'm going to respond with, we have no other option. It's your life at this point or ours. And these two imps take the shield high up into the air. And the pit fiend points at it. Says words in infernal, abyssal, you're not quite sure what this language is. And the shield just is gone. The pit fiend turns back to all of you and says, thank you. You're now free to go about your evening. And he snaps his fingers. The mansion mysteriously reforms around you and you are all back inside the mansion. The shield seemingly banished from Avernus once more. They have been looking for you since you arrived in Avernus with this shield. They did not want it on this plane. With the shield gone, you're all back in the mansion. They held true to their word. They will not engage with you until your paths cross again and the need arises. Aiden's running out the room straight to the front door. Okay. And you Opens the door. Are they there? They're departing. They are marching out and away. They have fulfilled I got their my, mission. I got in my room and I just locked the door. Okay. When Mortz is walking past Cressida, Cressida is just going to hand him the bag of holding. And under her breath, she's just going to say, I'm sorry we didn't find a solution for this. I let the bag hit the floor. I just walk away. Aiden shuts the door and just like sinks to the ground with his back against it, just like bracing it shut. I think that's going to make much difference if they can simply switch it off. They're leaving. They've left. I can't help. We should get some rest. We should. But I have a sickly feeling that if they wanted it gone that badly, did we just waste an opportunity to really lay into them? And she's going to pull the bag back up and swing it over her shoulder and head towards her room.
after a few minutes, Aiden will pull himself together and go back to his room. Piper, Mip. Is that journal still on the table in the library? It's, yeah, it's still in the library. The library is there. It didn't change. It just basically shifted you guys. The mansion basically shifted you there to go and read this because it had that information available for you. I think Piper's just going to go pick it up. She's going to start thumbing through it slowly. Just trying to, like, get the story of what this creature was. She's not really even reading it. It's just something to kind of distract her. Gargoth, who turned into Gargouth. Gargoth started out as a pit fiend. He essentially took far too much power, destroyed a realm, and basically those gods I read off to you banded together and you'll notice, I think all of them were considered evil gods banded together to get rid of this pit fiend who had claimed basically godlike powers. Um, and essentially he was trapped in the shield and banished from the realm of Avernus. Um, but the shield has been passed around from society to society and essentially wherever the shield goes it can cause corruption and evil to rise which is why they had kept it under Baldur's Gate um, at this point so all you, all that you know now is that it has probably been banished to another realm somewhere you don't know where regardless of how much they fear it. It's not good to have something that's willing to destroy a world out like that. We'll and it's weird. Now, with the shield gone, you realize that even in the back of holding, it may have been influencing all of you. And not necessarily in a good way. We'll find other ways. Let's go to bed. I just walk towards Mara. Does everyone head to bed? Yeah. Aiden's yeah. already in his room. Okay. And he's he's talking to Steeple. Okay. And he's telling Steeple what he was going to tell the party. Which, you know, was Piper had mentioned that we all want something. And Aiden wanted to be genuine and tell everyone what he wanted at like a deeper level. And he just tells it to Steeple, goes to bed. He needed to get it off his chest. And you all find yourselves asleep, all of you sleep rather fitfully. You are able to get a full night's rest Perhaps clearer heads will prevail as we move on, with the shield now gone and out of influence of all of your heads. And that is where we're going to end today's session. All right. Okay. That was pretty intense. So above the table with our audience, I'm going to make sure, is everybody okay? Everybody's mm -hmm. good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As the DM. Yeah, I'm okay. I made the decision to get rid of the shield just to get you guys up to date. Okay. Oh. Um, just because oh. I felt it was causing some issues that I did not want to see continue with the party. So I decided to essentially take it out of your hands. Um, it has been banished to basically uh, the water plane. It is at the bottom of the ocean. So 
just as a heads up, you're probably not going to encounter the shield again ever in your lifetimes. Okay. It was a pit fiend in the shield. Y you would not have been able to win against this army. So just no. above table, I wanted the shield out of the picture because I was worried that it was going to continue to cause issues and I didn't want that to happen. So I wanted to warp it so bad. <laughs> I know you did. I was going to warp it into the mo mausoleum or whatever and be like, okay, well, now oh. we got dragons on our side because they're going to defend their horde. Dragons probably would have not interfered in this conflict. So yeah. I hope everyone, I just want to make sure, like I said, I'm doing this with the audience here so they see that, like, we're having discussions because some dance is important. I know, I really know Nick wanted that shield, but at the same time, I know people were really uncomfortable with being there and continuing to cause issues, and I didn't want that to happen. I know we're probably going to have some fallout from what happened today. Um, so please talk to each other above table in Discord or however you need to. I'm going to shut us out of our game here in just a second. Um, but please, let's make sure we're all having conversations and making sure we're all okay with with all of what happened today, because that was pretty heavy, even for me. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it was good. Everybody, thank you for hanging out and watching. Today was a bit of an intense session with some inter-party conflicts. That happens occasionally. Um, I think we'll be back next week. Um, I don't know if all of our party will be here, but we will try to be here and continue the story and kind of resolve this. Um, we are streaming Baldur's Gate as well, so stay tuned for any go-live announcements. We usually stream on Thursday and Saturday. We do some Baldur's Gate, so you're more than welcome to come and hang out with us there. Our streams are a little bit longer and a little bit more chaotic and crazy and silly, um, but we hope to see you there as well. Also in October, I will be running the La Llorona one shot. We have um, three players um, set up. We have uh, Devin is going to be playing. Um, and I think we're also going to have um, James Estrada and Max Molina, who are two friends of mine who are very interested in La Llorona join us as well as some other players as well. Just getting that all finalized. So stay tuned for that in October, and I hope to see you guys next week, as we all do. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Stay tuned for more. See we'll see ya. Bye. Ooh, bye. <laughs> hey.